Okay, kia ora, welcome everybody to the Goodfellow webinar on vaping with Dr. Hayden McRobbie. Thank you, <laughs> nice to be here. Thank you for joining us tonight. Okay, well, uh, as, as uh, the topic of tonight's talk has uh, been published already, so you'll know what this is all about. But um, what I've tried to do here is take the evidence base as it currently stands, and in some areas it's still very thin, um, but also try and give some practical tips along the way. I know many, many of you out there are going to be um, talking to people who smoke that perhaps want to switch to vaping, or perhaps even non-smokers, family members that um, might be inquiring uh, for others. Just some disclosures here, and I think um, the most important thing I think for this for me is um, that I believe that vaping can make an overall positive contribution to public health. I don't think vaping is any magic cure, of course, um, but for many people who really struggle to stop smoking, switching to vaping uh, could really reduce uh, their health risks. Now, in terms of my views and my, my practice, um, I think we've got to remember that the best thing that anyone who smokes can do to improve their current and future health is to quit smoking. Um, bottom line, and that's stopping smoking completely. So I, I always discuss what I can offer to help people quit. Um, now, as a medical practitioner, I have a, a whole range of um, stop smoking medicines. Uh, we're lucky here in New Zealand, all four um, categories of smoking cessation medicines are funded. So that's the nicotine replacement therapies, bupropion, nortriptyline, and varenicline. Uh, we've also got access to stop smoking services. You all know how to access um, those either via Quitline or the face-to-face -face services um, who will provide multi-session behavioural support. So that's what we can, we can offer. For those smokers who won't or can't quit, um, the next best thing they could do would be to switch to vaping. So this is kind of a harm reduction approach. Remember that the health risks of smoking are really uh, because of the uh, products of combustion, not the nicotine itself. So for those that want to sweat or maybe thinking about switching to vaping, I provide them with information about what we currently know. And it's not, we, we don't know everything. We don't know the, all the long-term risks that might be associated with vaping. We do know, however, that vaping is less harmful than smoking. And for those that choose to switch from smoking to vaping, I support them to do so. So um, just a quick refresh here. Um, now, this is looking at prevalence of daily smoking, um, remembering that there are some people that don't smoke daily. Um, but here's the daily smoking prevalence, 13.8% overall. Uh, if we look at non-daily smoking, it's closer to 15%. A mm -hmm. uh, thing here to notice on this graph is we still have uh, higher, much higher smoking rates among Māori and Pacific. Uh, these are from the New Zealand Health Survey, um, and you can see there that smoking is more common in men, um, more common in Māori versus non-Māori, Pacific versus non-Pacific. Uh, Asians versus non-Asians, Asians are less likely to less smoke. Less likely, right, mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, as we all know, um, social deprivation is a major uh, factor here as well. So you can see there the uh, adjusted risk ratio of 3.85. So that's, you, you know this, this is who you're yeah, going to be seeing in practice. Familiar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, vaporizers or e-cigarettes. Um, you probably hear me use the term interchangeably, but I'm trying to move away from e-cigarettes just because people think cigarettes. Um, yes. and, and these are different. These are not um, tobacco products. They also don't burn anything. So they're quite different than your combustible cigarettes. Now, there are three main components um, in most vaporizers. One, they will have a battery, so they need a power source. Um, they generally have a tank or a cartridge that holds the e-liquid. Now, the e-liquid is um, typically compro comprised of uh, propylene glycol, vegetable glycerin, flavorings, and then nicotine, or, or not, depending on what you're using. And then they all have a, a coil that heats the liquid and essentially aerosolizes it, um, often referred to as vapor. Um, but again, it's not burning, it's heating. Now, what about the cost of these things? Um, they do vary. Uh, you can you get some very expensive vaping devices and you can get some, uh, you can get a very reasonable product for around $50. Uh, 
But when you're looking at comparison compared to smoking, um, average cost of a pack of cigarettes per day around $177 a week, which is just over 9,000 a year. Vaping puff for puff from a cigarette um, on average around a tenth of the cost. That's a bigger difference than I was expecting, actually. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so although there's still a cost associated with this, and for some people, nine hundred dollars a year is still a, a, a bit of money, mm -hmm. but in comparison to smoking, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's significantly cheaper. Right. What does the Ministry of Health think about all of this? Well, um, we have a very progressive uh, Ministry of Health here, and the Ministry of Health believes that e-cigarettes A, have the potential to make a contribution to our smoke-free 2025 goal, which is a smoking prevalence of less than 5%, and that vaping could disrupt um, the significant inequalities that are present currently associated with smoking. But the potential of uh, vaporizers or e-cigarettes to improve public health really depends uh, on the extent to which they act as a route out of smoking. So switching completely from smoking to vaping without providing a route into smoking for those people that don't currently smoke, so children and non-smokers. So I'm gonna cover, cover both of those. Now, what's the current legal status? Um, well, a few years ago, um, it was illegal to sell nicotine containing e-cigarettes, but this all changed uh, recently. And this was a court case, Philip Morris versus the Ministry of Health. Um, and the court ruled that um, all tobacco products except chewing and dissolvable types could be lawfully sold under the Smoke Free Environments Act. So this meant that vaping and heated tobacco products, which I'm not going to cover tonight, but they're a new group of products um, that are called heat, or typically referred to as heat, not burn. Right. So they do contain tobacco, and um, they heat the tobacco, though, not burn it. So they technically would be uh, certainly safer than smoking. So... What does this um, mean here? Well, the same Smoke Free Environments Act regulatory controls that apply to smoked tobacco um, would also apply to uh, heated tobacco and vaping products. So this would include a ban on sales to minors and restrictions on advertising. So that's, uh, that's good. Um, however, it doesn't apply, uh, the ban on indoor smoking doesn't apply to um, to vaping, it only applies to smoking. So currently, mm -hmm. um, there's no legislation that would ban vaping indoors. Okay. Okay. Um, but uh, individual employees or businesses can decide on what they want to do, and this is pretty much what's happened in other countries, uh, like the UK, where some might allow vaping in some areas, or they might allow vaping at certain times of the day. Have you got any sense of how how workplaces are responding to that here? I think most workplaces here are. Are treating vaping like smoking, so they would they would um, ban um, blanket ban. Blanket ban. Yeah, sure. However, I think that we you know we could do a little bit better here. We'll be a little bit more mm. clever, perhaps, with some of our policies. Um, so, for example, if you um, had a site which banned smoking inside and outside mm. to encourage people to switch, you might say, well, actually, we we don't allow smoking outside, but we do allow vaping outside. But yeah. inside, it's completely no smoking, no vaping. So, you know, that's Room for room to move. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I just noticed a question there about secondhand effects, yeah. um, secondhand vaping. Um, we don't yet know of any risks of secondhand vapor. If they are, if there are any, they're going to be much lower than secondhand smoke. Right. And I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later on when we're looking at the toxicants that are in vaping. That'd products. be great. There's a few questions about the safety, and I know yeah. we're going to get to that yep. a bit later. So. We'll I'll get, carry we'll on. Get on with okay. that. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the first thing I wanted yeah. to cover off is, you know, does vaping help people quit smoking? Now, um, there, there are still no magic cures for smoking cessation. So th this, is a, this is another thing. It's, it's no magic cure. But if we just start with the premise that if you're using a nicotine containing electronic cigarette and it delivers enough nicotine, which is what smokers crave. Remember, smokers are addicted to nicotine. Yeah. Um, they don't die from the nicotine, they die from the products of combustion. Um, but if it can deliver nicotine, 
then wouldn't it help people stop smoking, given the nicotine replacement mm. therapy does the same thing? Same principle. Same yeah. principle. So if you work on those principles, yeah. you'd say yes. Yeah. Well, um, there's growing evidence for this. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a don't have many good quality randomized controlled trials yet, which is really what we need here to, to look at uh, how effective these are. The two that we do have, and one was um, conducted here in New Zealand, when you combine those data, nicotine containing e-cigarettes or vaporizers compared to non-nicotine containing e-cigarettes uh, increased long-term quit rates. Okay, so we, we do have some evidence. The Cochrane review, uh, as uh, cited here, says, yep, they work, but small number of trials, so we really have to rate the evidence as low by grade standards. And that looks like it's comparing with placebo. Yeah, with placebo. Rather than comparing with other forms uh, of cessation correct. therapy. Yep. Yeah, okay. You, we will right. see more data coming out that's com that compares e-cigarettes with standard treatments. Yeah. Um, so so we'll, the, yeah. the evidence will grow. Sure. I think the thing we've seen with vaping is it's the most popular quitting mm. aid. So I mean, this is what we've always struggled with, yes. right? Our traditional stop smoking medicines or even stop smoking services have not been particularly great or yeah. uh, people sort of don't like using them. Here we've got something completely different where we've got people that are buying these things themselves, they're using them and they're making yeah. the switch. So um, it's a slightly different um, situation. I mentioned that the evidence is uh, growing. Uh, we do have some real world evidence. Um, this particular study published in March this year uh, concluded that daily e-cigarette initiators were more likely to have quit smoking cigarettes or reduced compared with non-users. Mm -hmm. um, but there was a slight catch there in that actually what you saw is those people that vaped every day, they were the ones that were more likely to quit smoking or reduce. Right. All these sort of experimenters or people that just use them, you know, some days of the mm. week um, are really no more likely to quit smoking than those that don't use them. And I think we've got to remember, too, there are a, a certain population of smokers that will be using these just to get by in those situations where they can't smoke. Yeah. Right. Um, so they may not want to stop smoking, um, but they're smoking when they can, and when they go in other places, don't they might be vaping. They might be vaping. Right. And, and I think yeah. this is a real opportunity for us here to say, hey, look, mm. if you are vaping, how about aiming to stop smoking? Mm. You know, switch completely. Switch to completely. Yeah, yeah, because that's where you'll get your biggest benefits. Yeah. Um, in terms of um, smoking reduction, this was a, a small study um, with. 50 smokers with a psychotic disorder. Now, we all know that uh, you know, many of our patients with mental illness mm -hmm. smoke, and they're often the really heavy smokers. Mm -hmm. um, they're the people that really can't afford to smoke. A really uh, high and, risk for all of And a really high risk for things. a whole lot yeah. of other things going on. Yeah. Yeah. Now, in this study, they gave them uh, six weeks of free e-cigarettes. Okay. And what you're seeing in this, um, in this graph is the cigarettes or e-cigarettes per day. Okay, and you can see as they were as they were given e-cigarettes, their cigarette their mm. consumption significantly decreased. Then once they stopped, they, you know, the e-cigarettes were taken off them again, you can see a slight increase in cigarette consumption, but still remained significantly lower than it was at week two. Yeah, it's two. interesting, not back up to baseline. Yeah. yeah. So I think this gives us some um, examples here that these e-cigarettes, when used well, can deliver nicotine. Mm. And you know what? If you're if you've got a good device and you're really good at using it, your nicotine delivery can be very similar to tobacco smoke. Right. So okay. if you know how to use it and you're practicing it using it, then you can get some real benefits. But it does take practice. It really, it, most people don't pick up an e-cigarette or vaporizer yeah. and switch overnight. And certainly anecdotally from patients I see in the, in the practice, this is what I hear is they have to really yeah. learn how to use it. Learn how to devices. use it and also yeah. have realistic expectations. It's not yeah. like smoking. It's different. It's, it's right. quite different. Um, no, I just want to balance this yeah. with some evidence to the contrary. Okay, yeah. so it doesn't come across like I'm yeah. promoting, <laughs> promoting it. But, it yeah. um, you, you do see data published, um, particularly from longitudinal studies. Mm -hmm. um, so this uh, particular study, for example, took people who were vaping at base, smoking and vaping at baseline, and then they followed them up for a year. And what they found was that the odds of quitting smoking were lower 
for those people vaping at baseline compared to smokers who did not vape at baseline. Okay, so you could mm. interpret these data to say actually vaping undermines quitting. The quitting attempt. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. So, um, yeah. when you look at this though more closely, um, it, there are some limitations to this type of research, which is why I think um, you know, randomized controlled trials are still the gold standard here. But when you're looking at longitudinal research, it um, by taking people who are smoking and vaping at baseline you exclude all the people that might have successfully quit mm. by vaping already. So they're, they're excluded. Yeah. The definition of vaping is also important. Uh, as I mentioned that previous study, the benefits are really when you've got regular daily vaping. Sure. If you've got just, I vape every now and then, then you may be in that group. Who yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, you might be sure. in the group that actually don't even want to quit smoking. Yeah. Um, or that you've got dual users that just can't make the switch because they're so dependent. So um, it's just something to be aware of when you're when you're reading yeah. the, the research. In terms of barriers to vaping, uh, so again, it's a, a nice study that looked at the sort of reasons that people um, gave up vaping. And the number one reason or the most commonly cited reason here is not as effective as cigarettes. And what do you mean by effectiveness? Is that the sort of... Most people, it's about the satisfaction, right? which is probably an element of how much nicotine they're getting yeah. out of them. So people will perhaps uh, try vaping and they'll go, you know what, it just wasn't as good as smoking. Yeah. Um, so okay. it's not delivering as much nicotine. It's not the same behavioral sensations. It's not the same smell. Mm. You know, all those sensory motor exactly. replacements are, are very important as well. So this is why in our practice we need to say, look, it's not going to be like smoking. Just like we do with nicotine chewing gum, you know, you'll hate it to start with, um, but persist with it, you'll get to like it over time. Um, you might actually have to try different flavors. You may have to try different mm. strengths of nicotine e-liquid. Um, so there's a number of things you might need to go you through. You need to personalize. Yeah. There's just a couple of questions about the nicotine in particular that I wonder if this would be sure. a good time for. Um, someone's sort of commented that with cigarettes, is it a seven second hit of nicotine? So I guess it hits quickly is what they're saying. Mm. Um, and do you get the same kind of quick onset with vaping? Not as quick as smoking, but right. if you know how to use your device yeah. and you've got a decent enough nicotine level, then you can get something much, much more similar to smoking than you could with any of the yeah. nicotine products. So, okay. so you could get a peak plasma concentration of nicotine reach within five minutes of, right. of vaping, okay. whereas your nicotine gum is sort of 20 minutes or so. Yeah. So not, not quite as fast as smoking, yeah. but I think some of the devices are getting pretty close to that. Oh, that's good. Okay. And what about the safety of nicotine itself? And then we make, I think we're going to talk a little bit more about the safety of vaping. Yeah. But nicotine itself as a, you know, I guess that's what we're trying to do. Well, here. you know, I, I guess a lot of people worry about um, nicotine overdose. Mm. Uh, and that's certainly something people worry about with nicotine replacement therapy. Mm. I've, I don't think I've ever overdosed people on nicotine in my life. Mm. But um, if, if they did, one of the first symptoms is, is nausea. The thing with vaporized products or inhaled products is people are much better at titrating their dose. So the, the risk yeah. of overdose is, is pretty low. Is low. Yeah. Okay. At least for smokers. Um, you need to keep these out of the reach of kids, obviously, yes. and pets, because yeah. you know, some e-liquids have very high you know, concentrations yeah. of nicotine, and you don't want accidental poisoning. Yeah. Um, in terms of uh, risks of nicotine, there are some risks of nicotine in pregnancy. For example, we right. think that um, nicotine exposure in pregnancy may have a relationship with SUDI, sudden unexplained oh. death in infancy. So that's yeah. that's sure. there, yeah. and perhaps perhaps learning difficulties or right. behavioral abnormalities. Okay. But these data come from animal models. So we're not quite yeah. clear how that translates to, to humans. And so the advice in pregnancy for vaping would I think, be a balancing I think it's you've got to go back yeah. to that balance. And yeah. if I'm what I tend to do in um, with pregnant women that ask me about this is I talk about what I can give them and what I know most about, which is nicotine replacement therapy. And there's still a risk benefit there yes. as well. Yeah. Um, but the guidelines, of course, recommend that you can use NRT um, in pregnant women. If you're using a patch, just take that off overnight. That's the only thing. Um, but if you've got a woman that's tried this and is still smoking and mm. wants to vape, 
um, then I think our job is to explain that we're, we're not 100%, these aren't 100% safe. Yeah. There may be some risk, but um, on balance, on balance yeah. it may be better. If you can stop smoking yeah. and stop smoking completely, this would be a better option. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Thank you. I think, yeah, there's just a question on that with the 30 and the cause of it, whether it's different than with cigarettes. Um, is it, 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 it wouldn't be any different than with cigarettes, but I think just remember in cigarettes, there's a whole cocktail of different things. chemicals and yeah. carbon monoxide, which um, all have a role to play in this. Yeah, yeah. Well, that makes sense. Um, okay, I think maybe we should carry on and then we'll okay. talk a little bit more about the safety stuff as we come across okay. that. So here, here we, we go, how, how safe is vaping? Yeah. Well, um, we really do know, this is what we're very clear on, is the risks of smoking. Mm -hmm. And again, the main risks of smoking are a result of the products of combustion. Um, it's the stuff you burn. I'm always surprised when I'm talking to some of my patients and they'll be talking about cannabis or something else that mm. they'll be smoking. They don't quite get the link that it's the burning of organic material that causes the problem and, and not mm. so much the nicotine. Um, of course, there's no combustion involved here with vaping, it's heated. So with no burning, we know that there are significantly fewer toxins. Okay. Vaping's not harmless, Mm -hmm. but it's much less harmful than smoking. And I think that's a very clear message. Um, and I think there's really international agreement that it's less harmful than smoking. But smoking is so harmful, um, it, it's, it really stands out there. Now, um, David Abrams and others have tried to sort of place this on a, on a scale mm. um, of, of risk. So it's a continuum. And at one end, you've got cigarettes with it, which are the most risky mm -hmm. nicotine delivery products that we, we have. Okay. And then at the other end, you've got your nicotine replacement therapy. Electronic cigarettes, vaporizers sort of fit in that much less harmful, perhaps a little bit more harmful than... Possibly more than the NRT traditional yeah. products. Yeah, that's right. And that's because NRT is only giving you the nicotine. Yes, right. If there's anything that I personally, I think that might cause problems longer term, it might be some of the flavorings that are in um, yeah. vaporizers. So I think we had a question about that actually, if, you know, is there a belief, there's a belief in the vaping community that certain flavors are more harmful um, owing to the composition. Yeah, and the, so for example, uh, cherry flavor is something that, you know, there's some evidence that we might want to stay away from. Um, yeah. the, the cinnamaldehydes and cinnamon flavors right. are probably something you wouldn't want to use. And the thing that everyone uh, talks about or often talk about is the buttery flavors and the diacetyl. Now, right. diacetyl is a chemical that's used to flavor popcorn. It gives you that buttery flavor right. of popcorn. Okay. And, um, there are case reports of popcorn lung from these popcorn factory work workers, yeah, right. Right, bronchitis okay. obliterans, yes, right? Yeah. So um, when diacetyl was found in, in the early days, some trace amounts of it were found in some of the flavor, buttery flavorings. It's, it's since been taken out. Um, but the, the concern was, well, if you're inhaling diacetyl, then are you at risk of this popcorn okay. lung? Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen one case report of popcorn lung right. uh, in vaping. And actually, diacetyl is also found in cigarette smoke. Right. Um, okay. And so it's 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 really going to be, of course, a, yeah. the concentration of the toxicants yeah. um, determines the uh, adverse effects. So course. do you advise your patients on, on flavours in particular? To stay well, away from? I, I, I don't generally because the industry have mostly got rid of those. You know, as, right. as we know, right. more things that come up, those things typically get sh get yeah. shifted off the, the okay. shelf. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, it's it's about this whole balance of, look, it's it's they're not harmless, yeah. they're just much less harmful than smoking. That makes sense. Um, but there's also another, another um, couple of elements here. We're not just talking about the harmfulness of it. Um, we've also got to think about the dependence mm. uh, of this. So with electronic cigarettes, vaporizers, if they're good and they're satisfying, they're going to be delivering nicotine much more like smoking. Mm. Now, what that might mean is that people become addicted to those addicted. and yeah. carry on using them longer term. Um, we've been trying to get better NRTs for a long time, but it's always the balance between, well, if we make them too good, too good so will you get so they go, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, sure. And the other thing to think of here is appeal. Um, and yeah. we, we've got the case where we've got vaporizers that are not only really appealing to people, they're less harmful and they 
more satisfying than some of our other nicotine delivery products. Yeah. So in, in a way, it's a, that sweet spot for getting people off tobacco, yes. um, but perhaps more of a concern for people that might get addicted to those. Um, I think we can make these products as safe as we can. Um, for example, we might want to keep you know, a register of, of, of flavorings that may not be as yes. good as others. Yeah. Um, we yes. want to make sure you've got good batteries, um, you know, good atomizers, you know, good quality products that aren't going to explode in your face when you use them or charge them. Um, and the ministry is developing standards for vaping products. Um, and these would be expected to become mandatory when the Smoke Free Environments Act is changed to include vaping. Okay, but that's that's some months away. Uh, right, yeah. 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 Now, um, another thing that people worry about, and I think this is a legitimate concern, uh, by the way, is young people who do not smoke that experiment with vaping. Yes. Okay, now these are New you Zealand data. Too. Yeah. And you can see over time from 2012 in the yellow bar um, to 2016, you can see this increase in ever trying mm. electronic cigarettes. Okay, so this is experimentation. So mm -hmm. as they become more available, um, and it wasn't illegal to sell non-nicotine containing e-cigarettes to yes. under 18 year olds. Yeah. Um, so you know, that, that's something that needs to be tightened up in the legislation as well. But you can see this increase in experimentation, mm -hmm. uh, which probably reflects um, availability. availability. Yeah. Now, the, the, the yeah. kids experiment. Um, in the same survey here, you can see um, you know, 18 to 16 percent of kids experimenting with tobacco. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, the chances of them getting hooked are greater if they're experimenting on cigarettes than they are with vaping Vape. products, mm -hmm. just because the nicotine delivery um, is not yet as, as good. Yeah. Um, but there's still concern, well, you know, what if this is a gateway, a gateway. Mm -hmm. to smoking? Uh, and, and, and this is a um, systematic review published last year. And you can see here a number of studies that looked at the association between um, kids who don't smoke that tried vaping and then at a later time point whether they were, were smoking. Right. And actually all the data are pretty consistent. And that is that kids that try vaping are more likely to try smoking at a later time point than kids that don't try vaping. Right. Okay, so that association is quite clear. Quite clear. Um, mm. The difficulty here is, is, is there a, another factor that actually is associated with both trying vaping and trying smoking? Mm, exactly. So is there yeah. sort of a common link between yeah. those two? And that's yeah. really difficult to tease out yeah. um, because we, we, we can control for some things, and they do in these studies, um, but you can't control for everything. Mm. Um, so at the moment, um, yes to association, uh, yes to association, no to causation. But that doesn't mean that there is absolutely Nothing. no evidence yeah. to say that they might cause. It's no evidence either way, I think, is, is my, um, my view on this. Yeah. So these are for smoke, these are for smokers. Okay. Current Not, smokers. Current smokers, yeah. yeah. Not yeah. for adults. Um, because, you know, I always worry with kids that they go, this is only for adults that they want to do it. This, yeah. this is a product for smokers, is yeah. really what I, I like to say. So what advice can we give? Um, and these um, bits of advice were published in the um, Journal of American Heart Association earlier this year. Mm -hmm. um, so their points were that daily e-cigarette use is generally more effective for quitting than intermittent use. So getting people to use it regularly, mm -hmm. just like you would with nicotine replacement nicotine. therapy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it may take practice to learn how to use the device um, and to deliver the right amounts of nicotine. So you, you kind of have to stick with it for a bit. Third bit of advice here, stop using combustible tobacco cigarettes as soon as you possibly yeah. can. So it's a switch. We're it's a switch. A switch it's encouraging a switch, yeah, absolutely. Um, and and I, I I personally agree, I don't I know some of my colleagues don't agree with this, but my view is an aim to stop vaping at mm. some point in the future as well, um, just because of that risk. So it's kind of that harm reduction approach, yes. but as soon as you feel comfortable that you've quit smoking for good and you feel mm. like you're not going to relapse, aim to stop Good later. Advice. Yeah. Um, more advanced models, more advanced vaporizers can deliver nicotine more efficiently. Um, so they typically work better for your more highly dependent smokers. So I, you might have seen those cigar-like type devices, those small ones. Yes. 
they don't really deliver much nicotine. Oh, so okay. um, I always say to my um, patients, go and go and talk to the vape shop yeah, experts they know because about they know about yeah. this stuff. Um, <laughs> and and this yeah. technology is changing all the time. It's it's yeah. hard for even me to keep up with it. And I, I don't see myself as the expert here. So I encourage people to go along and um, and, and and check out their lo local vape shops. Um, carefully read and understand the manufacturer's recommendations for care. These are electrical products, right? Mm. So um, you don't want to charge them with a random charger. You know, make sure you treat them as electrical products and with care. You probably don't want to be vaping in the bathtub, uh, for example. Now, I just want to... Shall we have a look at some questions yeah, before we go yeah, on with yeah. some cases? Yeah, yeah, I think the cases will probably cover some of them, but I think good to just address some of these things. So I guess... Um, just starting, there were a few that came in early on, which I'll just scroll up to make sure I see everything. I think we've talked a little bit about the safety. In terms of long-term effects of vaping, I guess perhaps we're still waiting on some of that information, are we? We, yeah. we, we are, and just like smoking, it took some 50 years or so to us for, yeah. to realise the effects of smoking, uh, of lung cancer, for example. Uh, I suspect there will be similar with vaping. We won't know mm. for some time yet. Yeah. Um, only to say that the health risks of vaping will be much less than the health risks if they continue to smoke, yes. but but not zero risk. Uh, and I guess if any organ uh, is going to be damaged, it, it may be the lung. And as oh. I said, I think that it's poss possibly the flavorings that would be most likely mm. uh, to cause to cause harm. Mm. Um, the other ingredients, propylene glycol, vegetable glycerin, yes. um, that doesn't there, there are not any data to suggest that they are harmful when inhaled, but again, um, no one's no one's vaped for a long time. For a long time. time. So we're not, uh, there's a specific question about whether vaping yep. produces carcinogens, I guess, to the best of our knowledge at the moment. Well, it, 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 it can produce it. carcinogens. So um, there were some studies that showed that when you superheated your vaporizer or right. an atomizer, it produced formaldehyde. Oh, um, and formaldehyde is, of course, a uh, carcinogen. Yeah. Um, but these were where you overheated the device. Um, mm. And vapors notice this as a really acrid taste. Right. Um, they sort of call it a dry puff. Okay. Um, and so they don't do that. They okay. don't overheat their device. But um, this is where you need to make sure you know you change the coil and there's no you know yeah. carbon build up or anything on, sure. on that. So, so this is about caring for, this your is about caring for your device. So it's not likely an area we're going to regulate our way through it in terms yeah. of the safety. And, and look, you know, there's so many things that we consume that contain carcinogens. Mm. It's not just about the presence of carcinogens. It's about the exposure to them. So both it's the concentration true. of these uh, chemicals and the duration at which you're exposed to them. Sure, and yeah. if you think about smoking, that's you know multiple times a day, very high levels over usually a, a number a of years. Period. Sure. Okay. Um, would you? I guess that sort of goes to some of the questions. Can you overuse a vape machine? I guess in terms of overusing it, is there any? Um, well, I'm just not familiar with the products at all. Can you sort of well, is there you know, a maximum there's, use there's, of them? Or? There's really not because people will titrate to their needs. So um, right. they'll be, you know, their brains are used to a fairly steady supply of nicotine from their smoking. So switching to vaping, people pretty much try and work out that the, the so same sort of. Level. I think there was another question actually about you know how we do for NRT, we'll calculate based on their cigarette use per day. Is there any advice for that? With, well, with basically, uh, do you let them sort of figure it out as, um, they, as they try? Again, I would refer them on to the vape yeah. store owners because they see people all the time. But what I do say is don't start too low. Um, okay. Because if you're starting, and sometimes people really want to go in, I'll go for the lowest strength because then yeah. I'm cutting right back. But what happens is they start going through a whole lot of e-liquid. And given it's not the nicotine that causes the harm, you actually don't want them vaping all of the time. So you might be yeah. better actually to use a slightly higher strength of nicotine. Um, but the okay. satisfaction is also related to the ratio of propylene glycol to vegetable glycerin as well. So the propylene glycol gives you that throat hit, the scratchiness. Right. The vegetable glycerin gives you the cloud or the, the vapor. So right. yeah, you know, people are very particular with yeah. how the ratio they want to use. What suits them. Yeah, yeah no, that makes sense. Okay. Um, just a couple more questions. Oh, for one person who was wanting some clarification, yes, we're using e-cigarettes and vaping interchangeably in terms of terms. Um, a couple of questions, actually, this is a really good idea. Can we get the harm minimization table as a poster for use? 
that was that's a great table. I'd be quite happy to have that in my room. Yeah. <laughs> so I can that, that's use a, it for um, education. That, that's a um, free online publication. Oh, it's open access, right. so you can. I wonder if we look. We that. might see if we can put up a link to it um, along with the, the sure. webinar yep. once we once we're done. And um, on that, there was a definition. S N U S. Ah, snus. Snus. Yes. What so, is that? Sorry. So <laughs> so snus is an oral tobacco product. Um, okay. It's primarily used in um, Sweden and um, in Norway. Right. Um, it has much much lower risk than smoking. Right. Um, okay. So actually, the the risks of snus are, are pretty low. Um, okay. That doesn't cause. Because it the was low... down the. the yeah. um, I uh, wonder if we can flick back to the yeah, table sure just so can. we can have a look at what we were. Oh, hang on, I've gone over there. If we do that, we might get back to it. Um, I must go. confess, I looked at it out of the corner of my eye and thought it said snuff and yeah, was thinking it's snuff, yeah. but it, no, so, it's different. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people think tobacco products. So here you've got um, from snus upwards are all yeah. tobacco products. And people just naturally assume that all tobacco products are like cigarettes, yeah. but yeah. They're, they're not. Um, and it depends on you know whether you burn them or you don't burn them. Um, but the way that snus is, is manufactured, it has very low levels of uh, cancer-causing agents. Oh, not okay. not all oral tobacco is as uh, as safe, yep. in the <laughs> commas, as as snus is. Right. Okay. Um, so there are you know there are varying degrees. Some of the um, oral tobacco that Southeast Asians might use are mm. harmful and cause oral cancers, right. for example. Um, snus doesn't. Uh, and there's been a lot, you know, many years of population use of snus, and then Scandinavia where smoking rates are really, really low. Yeah. But of course, there are many that have switched to snus. Yeah, sure. Oh, thank you for that. That's interesting. Um, someone suggesting, um, can we do a study in New Zealand around vaping? Um, you know, we've, well, we've, that, already, uh, we, we've already done one. Done one. Um, yeah. Natalie Walker and colleagues here at the University of Auckland have just finished off another. So oh, we'll, we should have okay. some some more data. Watch uh, the space. Yeah. Watch the space. <laughs> okay. um, uh, right. There there will be more data out this year or early into next year um, for smoking cessation. Would you, in your advice um, for someone who's switched to vaping? They've found a good level for them. Would you encourage them to reduce the amount of nicotine over time with a view to stopping? It's it's a it's a really interesting question and one I haven't quite got my head around here yet. Um, now some people do like to reduce their nicotine concentration, but I think they have to be ready. They have to have in their mind that they're going to stop vaping, um, and not too early. I think when people reduce their concentration too soon, they just end up compensating right. for the lower levels of nicotine by yeah. vaping more volume. yeah more sure. volume yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think it's a combination probably of less frequent yeah. as well so not just um, doing both things, doing both things yeah. Yeah. yeah okay I think we might be getting through them all um, yeah a few commenters talking about the trend among young people to buy vapes and you know the experimental trend, which I think we sort of talked about. Mm. That you know, I, I think it's watch the space, um, yeah. but also do everything we can um, to limit access to young non-smokers. I don't yeah. think there's anyone that wants Sorry, some that's, that's, yeah. young people getting addicted, getting addicted. to vaping. Yeah. Yep. Just a couple more that I noticed about practical use. Can we use them in combination with nicotine? Traction? Yeah, there's no problem in using them in combination with with yeah. NRT, and some people you know, will do that. We'll, we'll do mm. it. Yeah. One more question that came up actually in our clinic today that I think we were talking about earlier was um, staff asking what do we do with classifications on METI, for mm. example, in people who we know have switched to vaping. Um, so yeah, interested to hear your thoughts on yeah, that one. I, I think if they are no longer smoking cigarettes, they are ex-smokers, okay, um, because vaping is not smoking. Not smoking. Um, mm -hmm. Now ideally, I'd like to see a classification for vaping because I think collecting these data um, over time is going to be really important, especially if some health risks do emerge. Um, I, I guess at the moment, re record it anywhere you can. It's probably going to be in the in the notes section of um, yeah. of the practice management system. But uh, get it down somewhere. But if they are no longer smoking, ex smoker. They're an ex smoker. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Right, well, shall we move on through some of these cases? Okay. And keep the questions coming if anyone. Great, so I've got three cases here now. Um, these are cases that I see, and I, of course, I work in a specialist stop smoking service, so they're a little, little bit different, but you might, you might come across things uh, similar. So, first off, um, middle aged Māori woman, really heavy, uh, history of heavy smoking, um, had recently reduced 
to less than 10 cigarettes per day. But this was because of the price. Right. It wasn't because necessarily of, um, of want to, but it was a necessity she just had to because she could no longer um, afford to smoke her usual quantity. Um, smokes within five minutes of waking, so really good indicator Gosh. that she is a highly dependent yeah. smoker. Yeah. History of asthma, but otherwise well. Uh, this is what I very commonly see, smokes for stress release. And you know, how am I going to cope without my without cigarettes? My cigarettes. It's my, yeah. my friend, my stress release. That's what I do when I relax. Um, gave up during her pregnancies, um, but other, uh, outside of that, never managed to quit for more than wow. a few weeks. So this goes to show sometimes, no matter how highly dependent you are, you can actually still, still do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she tried all subsidized NRT products. She'd also tried Varenicline. Um, and so, get you. Okay. here we go. Um, she decided that she'd try vaping. Okay. And she'd started on a tank system. She was using 12 milligrams per mil of nicotine tobacco flavored e cigarette. Tobacco flavored products are very commonly what people start on. Right. Um, but many then switch to fruit flavor right. um, e liquids. So, yeah, anyway. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> now, she was. She was quite good. She switched within a couple of weeks. So she had a couple of weeks where she was smoking and vaping, um, but then she'd switch completely over to vaping and she'd been abstinent for six weeks. Um, two weeks ago, she decided that, you know, probably want to get off this, heard all these safety concerns about vaping, um, so halved her nicotine, nicotine. concentration. Uh, and see these things in real life and you think, oh yeah, that's good, that theory works. Um, she commented that she was actually now churning through more right. volume of, of her e-liquid and was saying, well, is this, is this okay? You know, I don't want to, I don't want the health risks, but I'm now going, I'm using a lower concentration, but, but more of but it. More of it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So exactly what you were warning yeah, about before. That's, that's yeah. right. So, you know, what, what do you say in this case? Well, yeah. what I'd say is first, you know, congratulations, you've been smoke free because that's obviously been, been a hard thing for her. And the thing that stands out for me here is that she was reducing her uh, concentration of nicotine due to safety concerns. Yeah. Uh, and people still have this concern about nicotine. Mm. Um, we've done such a good job, I think, in sort of warning people of, of the risks of smoking, but people get the nicotine message confused there. Yeah. So um, with her, I discussed the lower health risks of vaping compared to smoking. And I suggest that she go back up to 12 milligrams per mil, at least until she feels able that she's going to be able, okay, without without smoking, without smoking at all. As, yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, this is, she was mm. quite happy to do that once I explain where the risk is likely to come from. Uh, and, and in these cases, you want to follow up as, as well. Yes. I think when you've yeah. got people that are vaping, just, you know, ask them, how are you getting on? Are you still vaping? What's going on? And mm. you, you learn a lot from patients as well. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, as, as you absolutely. go through. So that, that's what I do on uh, that particular case. There's just been a question coming in saying, would you consider um, adding patches in this situation? Mm. Would, you, would you add patches? To yeah, look, I, I, supplement her? You could definitely do that. Um, if she wanted to stay on the lower dose, and yeah. you, could, you could certainly add some patches in as, as well. Um, about the nicotine yeah, yeah. Uh, I think most people would probably prefer just to um, up their dose of yeah. nicotine a little bit more. A bit yeah. yeah, no, that makes sense. And cheaper with the health system as well. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> exactly. Um, there is a comment here that I, I can sort of identify with this. It's a, it's a slightly different prospect, is it, that you send your patients off to the pharmacy to fill, fill their NRT prescription, and you hit some, you know, sending them down to Cosmic Corner to get advice, <laughs> as they put it, from a teenager yeah. on, a, on a drug imported from China seems risky. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's probably a concern we all share that, gosh, I'm sending you off to this place, I have no idea myself what they, I know, what I know. they tell me what they I, 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 I agree and I share yeah. that same uh, that same thing and what I did is I went around a few of the That's local vape really stores and, and talked yeah. to them um, so I sort of got an, an idea I, I, I know what you mean this is kind of outside yeah, our usual bit, area of yeah, ex expertise yeah. um, and you know, I don't always feel comfortable, also, you know, recommending mm. a particular supplier or a particular website. But if you've got some research, we can share patient stories, perhaps, where yeah. um, you know you can at least perhaps send people because they will ask you for advice and yes. send them somewhere. Yeah. 
I, I think product standards will really help with this um, and give us all some a little, little bit more reassurance, reassurance um, about, yeah. about these devices. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah that's interesting. Um, now, a comment just in patients with COPD. Yeah. Um, someone saying they've had patients with COPD using vaping successfully, great to quit, but others can't use it to make some cough. Um, is that anything to do with the actual mix? Of well, the it, 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 may, it may be. Um, and certain, I mean, propylene glycol is sort of a, a drying agent. It does right. give you a, it does give you a cough. It dries yeah. out your, your throat. That's so convention. that might be something that needs to be changed. Yeah. Um, again, um, so just for, trial and different. Yeah. yeah. Bit of trial and error. Bit of trial and error with different um, propylene yeah. glycol, vegetable glycerin mix might help there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. No, that's interesting. Um, also, thank you for these comments. These are great about um, classifications. Now, someone commented. Here we go. Read codes for vaping use uh, with medtech apparently circulated on a Zoom conference oh, a couple of weeks ago. That okay. sounds really great. Be really keen to hear it a little bit more about that. I wonder how we can find out. I wonder if we can... Um, we can certainly ask John McMenamin about uh, that. Would be great. About that. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if that might be something we can we can publish on our website yeah. once we find out okay. too yeah. and share that around. Um, there was something else here about... Oh, and a screening term um, introduced for vaping. Oh, yeah. Was a, yeah. So just thinking about how we classify that again. Mm. Um, any absolute contraindications for vaping? That you can think of as a stop smoking tool? No, I, I, I can't think yeah. of any um, because these are smokers yes. uh, and, and switching them. The start point is. The, the start point is so bad <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that so making that switch is going to be. Yeah. 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 So again, it's remember who our population is to start with, isn't it? Yeah, I guess if it's anyone to our head. Shall we move on to the next sure. case? I think we've probably caught okay. up a little bit. Yeah. Um, so that, this is a younger woman. Um, time pregnant, 24 weeks, second child, um, history of alcohol and methamphetamine use. Right. Uh, now, she was using the nicotine patch, which I'd started her on, um, and although she didn't mind it and had actually cut down um, the number of cigarettes quite significantly, she was just smoking sort of two to three cigarettes a day, but was really struggling with these times where she'd normally smoke or got a bit stressed out and she'd you know, the craving would come racing back and, and she'd be off smoking. And she had a friend um, who had stopped smoking using a vaping device and so asked me, can I, I really want to try this? I think this might help me get off the cigarettes completely. Um, what my, my advice on vaping uh, in, in pregnancy? Now, um, I've just put this up here. This is from the... Uh, it's a graphic from the UK, uh, the link's on the screen at the bottom. Uh, but, uh, you know, e-cigarettes are, are widespread use in the UK. And uh, this this poster was really developed to help um, pregnant mums sort of come to their own decisions about vaping mm. versus smoking. Um, so that you can see there, are e-cigarettes safe to use? Well, the answer to that is, well, there's, they're not safe. Um, they're not risk-free. They're much less harmful than smoking, though. Um, and so if a vaping product helps you stop smoking mm. and, you know, you tried other things, then, you know, why, why not? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so what, what do I say? Well, you know, for that case, I'd say, well, well done. You know, you're well doing done. well. You, you've yeah. got down. You're really, I can see that you're really motivated to do this. Um, then I go and say, well, look, do you want me to tell you what I know about vaping and what I know about vaping and pregnancy? And so you're really talking about the risks versus the benefits. And um, with this case, I, I would have all, already talked to her about the risks of nicotine in pregnancy because we um, re recommended the patch. Uh, but in, in this case, too, I'd also say, well, look, would you like to know what else I can provide? Mm. Now, you may have, we're lucky in our stop smoking service at Counties Monaco that we can um, provide the nicotine mouth spray, so a faster acting oh, NRT wow. product. Yeah. Um, as well. Yeah. Um, we also have financial incentives. Um, now, these, right. these vary from around the country. Uh, in our service, we offer up to $500 over a 12-week period gotcha. in, in shopping and, and vouchers for pregnant women. So they, they sort of get them in, in stepwise approach um, I over time. I work in Countess Monaco yeah. and didn't uh, know that. <laughs> actually, wow. incentives, financial incentives yeah. for helping pregnant women stop smoking are probably the most effective intervention. Really? Yeah. 
Uh, and money the, well spent over time. It is, it is yeah. very, it's money yeah. definitely well spent. And um, I think you know, part of how they work is just getting people in to get some support and talk yeah. through these issues um, can be really, really helpful. So if you, and there are many other face-to-face -face services too that are providing financial incentives. So if you don't know, give your local yeah. stop smoking service a call, find out That's about them. Because it makes brief advice for pregnant women really, easy. really do, easy. Do you want to stop smoking and earn some money, save some money um, yeah. from smoking, and actually get a little bit more? So wow. uh, that, that's certainly something you might like to consider. Um, this woman did choose to vape, um, and she did stop smoking completely, okay. uh, and was using Good. the patch and vaping every now and then. So it kind of worked out yeah. quite quite well. Um, so it's again follow up's really important here. Yes. Yeah. How long would you how long would you give between the follow-ups? Um, well, again, well, again, again when I'm working in a specialist yeah. service, I'm seeing them on a weekly basis. Gosh, um, so yeah, it's I've uh, I've I've got the luxury of time yeah. as well. Um, but you know, if you not every every four weeks would be fine. Just to see mm. how they're getting on. Yeah. It's really interesting. Did did you try double patching the pregnant woman? <laughs> would that I, be a... <laughs> I, I, I I didn't in this case because she that's this is she. She wanted to ask me about vaping, but she really yeah. had made up her mind that she yeah. was going to vape um, yeah. anyway. Um, you, you could try double patching, although my preference would be first to do a patch and a faster-acting NRT product right. um, before racing them with, with double patching. Double patching. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, just looking at a couple of the questions as mm. they come in, um, I think when people, so someone talking about um, I guess it's a couple of questions actually going to the, the sort of standards of what people are buying um, out there in the local vaping stores. There are some who make liquids locally um, and it's just someone commenting that if you know that your vaping store does perhaps compound those liquids locally, they're a better place to advise on what's in them and the safety and things like that. Yep. That sounds um, interesting versus imported stuff but we yeah. don't really know the well, actually. Uh, depending on where they're imported from. So if they've been imported from the EU or the UK or even the US, they have product standards already. Oh, okay. Uh, so so, be a so they, these are regulated in, in the EU right. under the Tobacco Products Directive. So, um, Good. you know, okay. we can, you know, importing them from the UK, for example, would give you more reassurance than importing them from a country that has no standards in anything yeah. whatsoever. Well, that's really good to know, actually. I wonder if that might be something we can put up for later, just for little points that we can we can um, give to patients. Is there any, someone's suggesting, should pharmacists be providing the vaping products? Um, yeah, I mean, we can well, see I, the logic in that. I, I, I think, yeah. that, you know, for pharmacists that, you know, that could go through, that could potentially, you know, choose the best product that they could find, mm. I'd, I'd say, why not? Why not? Yeah, yeah for some CNRT. Um, just a question here for you. Do you know much about medical grade e-juice? I don't know what that is. Well, refers they, to. they might be re referring to um, medical grade or pharmaceutical grade nicotine, um, which right. is really what you'd want to see in these yes. in these products. Exactly. Only pharmaceutical grade nicotine. Um, you don't get medical grade flavorings, but you can get food grade flavorings. Okay. okay. Um, right. So um, that means they're safe for safe ingestion, for use, yeah. uh, not necessarily safe for inhalation, though, because we just we yeah, just don't know. Yeah. That way. Yeah. And then you can get okay. medical grade um, propylene glycol and so on. So okay. um, yeah, there's there's some really good. Um, if you buy decent stuff, it's going to be made in the, in the best possible way. So with the New Zealand regulatory environment, when are we looking to get that sort of Well, it, de it, it depends on when the legislation's changed. Yeah. Now, the, um, it, it may be that the ministry will come out with its product um, regulation, but that would be voluntary to start off yeah. with um, until it becomes uh, in the legislation. Enforced, Enforced. Yeah. Enforced. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, someone sent us a link to a good uh, smoke free action website which we'll have a look at. Um, anything further, a question here from a study done in 2016, the, um, looking at possible nickel and chromium toxicity from vaping use. Yeah. Uh, um, they're, they're, because the coils are made of, um, of these metals, mm -hmm. there, are, there are going to be some toxicants, so, you know, nickel yeah. and copper and other things like that, but they currently at least the data that we have are at low levels and again that's not the, just the presence but the concentration uh, and i mean don't don't 
forget that smoking has all of the uh, tobacco yes. has all of these things as well. So that's the comparator. Yeah. Um, yeah if you've got non-smokers starting to vape, then you're seeing an, an increase in yes. risk. But if you're going the other way, then it's a decrease, it's a in, decrease risk. in risk. Yeah, it's a really important point to keep front of mind. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh no, thanks. But how are we going? Should we? I'll oh, just do this. Um, yeah. yeah. Just about the perception of risk. Um, never users, never um, vapors in particular, but also some ex-users felt that there was really a lack of information about the safety of electronic mm. cigarettes, and that leads to fear. Mm. Um, and they often found that they don't really have enough information to make an informed choice about these things. And I think in the past, we've had some health professionals that said, no, 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 don't talk to me about vaping. I can only mm. talk to you about these things. Mm. Um, you know, we're in a really good position to give advice and they want advice from their health professionals. Um, so I, I think, you know, do tell them what you know. You, look, you can't know everything about these things and this technology changes really quickly. Um, but even the basics would be would yeah. be useful and people are wanting this information. Um, just the, the final case here um, and, and really just to touch on some of these things that people have mentioned about safety. Mm -hmm. um, Pakia man this time, highly dependent, mild COPD. He'd been absent from vaping, uh, from smoking for almost two years. So he wasn't coming to see me to stop smoking. Um, he was a little bit concerned about the long-term risks of vaping. Okay. Yeah. And I think we're going to see more and more of this as time goes time goes on. And his, his main concerns were about the long-term risks. Um, he's saying, well, should I should I stop now? Mm. Um, and and how should how should I do it? Um, it turned out with this guy that he wasn't quite ready to stop vaping. And so right. my advice was to, to carry on. Um, but as soon as you feel ready, then then stop. But we did we were able to have a bit of a discussion about the, the health risks. Now, um, I'm really sorry, very busy slide here. But this is looking um, or sh demonstrating um, the percentage compared to cigarettes of a range of different substances. So if we look at the NNK, which is a carcinogen, um, you can see compared, if we just take that first column, cigarettes, people that were smoking and using NRT, yeah. they had only 57.1% of the amount of um, NNK mm -hmm. in their saliva or urine compared to cigarette smokers. So even when they'd okay. combined the NRT with the smoking, they'd probably smoke less, so therefore the exposure the was exposure less. Okay. Um, if they were looking at cigarettes and vaping, um, there wasn't too much. There was no significant difference there. Um, NRT only, 11.6%. Wow. Okay. And then vaping only, 2.5%. So those bolded figures there are showing you the significant, significant. Um, uh, lower amounts. So you can see there, it's all sort of going in the vaping column, all going the right way. Okay. Um, not so significant. Not so with the nicotine level. Yeah, so these things so. are delivering yeah, nicotine, which is of, yeah. um, not perfect, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, okay. That's what they can do. Yep. 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 Um, interesting with the NRT only. Um, they were really yeah, getting good nicotine getting replacement. Nicotine. Now this is my my thoughts here are that actually people that are long term NRT users are those that are really using it well and know how to yep. use it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, sure. um, so so again, yes, there are toxicants found uh, in, in e-liquid and in e-vapor. Um, and of course, this is absorbed in some cases and excreted, mm -hmm. but in general, compared to smoking, are much lower much levels. Lower level. yeah. um, this was uh, a, a paper published last year that tried to estimate cancer risk. Okay, so just in that highlighted box down the bottom, this is the ratio of risk compared to tobacco smoke. Okay, so um, you've got You've got three comparisons here. The um, first column is heat, not burn. So this mm -hmm. is this tobacco this product that's heat. heated, not burned. Uh, and you can see that has a lower risk, lower cancer risk. Um, your e-cigarette vapor, lower again. And then your nicotine inhalator, uh, very low risk of, of cancer. So nicotine inhalator is the pharmaceutical that's product. The pharmaceutical one, right. Yep. Okay. So again, overall, compared to smoking, much less harmful. Not harmless, but much less harmful. Much less harmful. Yeah. 
Um, and I think we have to be comfortable at the moment um, not knowing the exact degree of risk. Um, and uh, look, the, the UK Public Health England sort of took a, a stab at this and said vaping was, you know, 95% less harmful than smoking. And yet they, they got a little bit of flack for that right. um, because they are, they are estimates. But I think as we see more and more data coming out, you know, these levels of toxicants are actually, you know, much lower than that 5% yeah. level. So uh, it may be that, you know, the long-term risks of smoking are 99% less harmful than smoking. We just don't know though. Um, and just there for the further reading about that article on um, electronic cigarettes, why should I care? Um, good, nice, simple read, and it contains a lot of the uh, things that we've been talking about been talking tonight. About, oh, we'll, yeah. we'll post that with the webinar for people to follow up on. That's really great. Interesting. Lots of information there about the, the safety, which I think is the main source of questions, you know, anecdotally. Yeah. Um, I guess just to, just to yeah. um, cover off a couple of other questions that we may not have got gotten to, there were two questions actually on, I guess, the ideal world scenario of what the time frame, um, you know, we could aim for in terms of someone coming off cigarettes, switching to vaping, and then eventually quitting. Would you have a sort of broad it's, time frame in it, mind? Here? You know, I, I think that a lot of people are going to probably stop vaping within a, a year. Right. But it will depend on the person, yeah. their degree of nicotine dependence. It will depend on the device they're using and how good it replaces that. It will depend on their beliefs and whether yeah. they're particularly worried about health risks or not. Um, and you, you probably know a few patients that are long-term NRT users. Yeah. And some just never stop using it. Yeah. And I think we've got to be comfortable there as well that we will have some people that will want to carry on vaping. Yeah. Um, because if they stop vaping, they'll fear that they'll go back to smoking. So different strokes. Different strokes, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, are they on prescription? We can't really prescribe anything in terms of vaping, can we? No. So but these are consumer products, not yeah. not medical so products, so no fine. script. Yeah. Um, in terms of the nicotine inhalator, mm. that's not subsidised. So people have to purchase that themselves. It's around forty dollars for a week's supply. So it's mm. reasonably And are these, this is what they purchase from the vaping store. Oh, so they can they purchase that from? So the nicotine inhalator ah, is, the is the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical product which they can get from um, supermarkets or pharmacies. pharmacies. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be the sort of, we know that's, you know, available to be the standard. Yeah. Yep. Okay, excellent. Um, question here relating to nicotine safety and blood pressure and vasoconstriction from nicotine, I guess. Yeah. Um, you, you can see some small increases in blood pressure and certainly heart rate um, right. with, with nicotine. Um, we know that when people stop smoking, their heart rate drops by about 10 beats per minute. Oh, um, but the cardiovascular system becomes tolerant to the effects of, uh, of nicotine as, as well. So, uh, in fact, there are more case reports showing that people's blood pressure can go up when they stop smoking than it, than it does oh, really? the, other, the other way around. So, um, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, apart from these you know, relatively small changes, um, it doesn't have a big adverse right. effect on, on blood pressure. So not something we would need to be actively following and no. managing. No. Yeah, okay. Um, someone has sent us through, thank you very much, a link on some training um, for conversations with pregnant women, which we can certainly post up. I think that's, yeah, that's always good. a useful mm -hmm. thing to um, keep front of mind. Um, question there on fast acting NRT, what you, I think we were talking before about how that would be a useful thing to do yes. ahead of double patching. Yep. What would you consider okay, to be so, fast acting NRT? So the faster acting NRT products are your gum, your lozenge mm -hmm. uh, and your mouth spray. Right. Okay. Now by fast acting I mean they reach their sort of peak plasma concentration with sort of 20 minutes or so. So gum and lozenge 20 minutes, mouth spray a little bit faster, maybe around 10 minutes, okay. um, but still not as fast. Still not as fast as vaping. No way no as fast as vaping and yeah. no, nowhere near um, tobacco. So that's yeah. what I mean by faster acting yeah. NRT products. Faster than patch. Patch it's takes some long. hours, six yeah. hours or so to reach peak plasma concentration. Yeah. So it's the, it's why we often use combination therapy, patch yes. and gum, patch and lozenge, because you've got the fast acting with the slow acting. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, someone wondering if there's any cigarette companies going into this world of vaping products. Well, there there are the there vaping. there are yeah. indeed cigarette companies, tobacco companies that have bought out um, e-cigarette oh, okay. companies, uh, and you know 
rewind back time to sort of 2007 when we were doing some of the original studies here at the University of Auckland, these were not tobacco company products at all. They were all very small um, companies. Yeah. Um, it's maybe a bit of a shame that the tobacco industry is moving into this area, but they are. Um, and I guess they'll be developing more and more as as we as we go through. Yeah, but there I think thankfully some still independent um, vaping manufacturers, uh, which is which is nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, look, I think we've sort of got some really useful information out of that. Thank you, Hayden. I think it's um, really good to discuss it in an area that probably a lot of us don't feel 100% confident in. <laughs> um, but yeah, some really, really good information, and we'll try and post some of these um, links that we've talked about tonight Great. on the website. So thank you very much. Any You're last welcome. comments from you? Well, any... I, I think, as I said before, learn from your patients, especially those that are vaping. Um, you know, ask them about it if you've got some time. I think you'll find out uh, a lot yeah. more than I can ever tell you in a, uh, in a short webinar. Yeah. That sounds good advice. Well, thank you very much. And look, thank you, everyone, for listening. Oh, just finally, actually, I wonder this too. What's your opinion on where we are against the 2025 smoke-free goal? Yeah. Um, <laughs> for those of you who heard me on Breakfast News this morning, yeah. um, uh, look, I, I think reaching the uh, 2025 goal is a bit of a challenge, mm. to put it mildly. And but I think if we are serious about reducing smoking rates, then we really have to offer some alternative products to people who are addicted to tobacco. We've still got some 600,000 smokers mm -hmm. uh, in this country. Um, we're not going to get anywhere quickly if we don't offer safer alternatives to smoke tobacco. Right, I think we should finish on that note. It's food for thought for us all. No, look, thank you very much. I really Pleasure. appreciate it. And thank you all for listening. We'll see you next time. <laughs>